My name is Julia Olson. I'm a resident of Eugene, and I'm in Betty Taylor's ward. I'm also the executive director of our Children's Trust, an organization here in town that's working on climate change on behalf of young people. I was here a few weeks ago in September, which was a month where rainfall in western Oregon shattered all prior records, according to the Register Guard. One result of climate change are these kinds of extremes in weather events, and we'll see lots of rain falling all at once, and it's not able to be absorbed into the soils, and so it really affects our ecosystems. At the last city council meeting, Teo Olson spoke about Nelson Canuck, a boy in Alaska. And I just recently was in Barrow, Alaska with Nelson. He's the boy who lost his home because of the melting permafrost and the flooding that's happening to his community in Kipnuk. And we were in Barrow, which is the northernmost town in the United States, to hear the Alaska Supreme Court hear an oral argument in his atmospheric trust lawsuit against the state for failing to address the state of Alaska's greenhouse gas emissions. And that, the argument was held in a high school in Barrow in front of hundreds of kids. It was completely inspiring. And it, this is a community that's on the front lines of climate change. They're losing their sea ice. Their town is sinking because of the melting permafrost. Their infrastructure is affected. The wildlife that they subsist upon is diminishing. Their ability to hunt is diminishing. They see it. Everybody in this community sees it. So climate change is affecting the Inupiat and the Eskimos of Alaska, but it's also affecting us locally. It's our hope that this fall you will consider putting a climate recovery ordinance on your agenda and consider passing it in order to memorialize the goals of the city and really commit to the emission reductions that are necessary and to plan for that. And I'm reminded tonight that you all have very pressing issues to address from the homeless citizens of our community to parking downtown and business interests. There are lots of pressing issues of the moment, but I ask that you have foresight and use your, your wisdom, your leadership to really plan for what will face our children in the future. Um, and the reason is, is unfortunately climate change is known to be uh, a slow violence. Um, so it continues to get worse and we don't see the full impacts today, but it's only today that we can fully address the full impacts by really reducing our emissions. So thank you. Next up is Cheo Olson, followed by, looks like, Ima. My name is Teo Corbin Frost Olson. I live in Eugene, Oregon. I'm nine years old and in fourth grade. By 2050, when I am 46 years old, we need to stop using fossil fuels. We need to bike, drive less, and less we use electric cars. I want Eugene to have a bike sharing system like other cities have. The city should have bigger bike lanes. Climate change leads to drought and more fires and flooding. My grandma and great-grandma almost lost their homes because of the fires in Colorado, and flooding has hurt their cities. Please act on climate change. Thank you. I'm that is next. Followed by Kira Gunther. I'm Emma. Hold the mic up for, so you don't have to crouch over. Okay. Yeah. I'm Emma. I'm 10 years old and I live in Eugene. I'm here to talk about climate change. Climate change is affecting all the plants and animals and also melting ice glaciers. The result for that is rising tides and soon some of the islands will be covered up completely. But if we can re reduce emissions by only 6%, we can make a, the world a better place. Kira Gunther is next, followed by Esteban Camacho Stephenson. Good evening. Um, I'm Kira Gunther, and I live here in Eugene. Um, I am an environmental studies um, major at LCC, and in the last few months, I have had the opportunity to work with a wonderful and inspiring group of um, young people to address the consequences of climate change. 
And during my younger years, I was haunted by the talk of climate change and the destruction of our natural environment. Growing up in the Midwest, I was out hope and or direction for a sustainable future, and I felt as though I was the only one that recognized the need for immediate action. Now, here in Eugene, I am empowered by this progressive city and inspiring youth, and we ask you, City Council, to join us in considering an ordinance that we're proposing in coming months that would legally commit Eugene to emission reductions and initiatives that would transition this beautiful city off of fossil fuels. I have only been here four months, and the people in, in, in this city have completely changed my world. Please continue to inspire me, the youth, and the rest of the country by taking a strong stand against climate change. Thank you. Esteban Camacho Stephenson is next, followed by Elizabeth Brown. Hello, my name is Esteban Camacho Stephenson. I'm a local and international public artist uh, focusing on ecosystem conservation. I'm working with the organization Our Children's Trust by leading this group of children, their parents, and friends in creating a public mural painting. The images will be created for the Eugene community. The mural will be located on a main street, hopefully Willamette Street, so that our message is visible to a wider audience of people. The mural will show both local, environmental, <coughs> legal achievements and challenges. The painting will depict children interacting with our natural environment and symbols of hope. I recently worked on a mural uh, in Costa Rica for a building owned by Partners of America. Uh, Costa Rica is partnered with Oregon for their affinity with environmental protection and social programs. I mentioned this uh, because I did a, a blending of the Oregon forest with the Costa Rican jungle, highlighting migrating birds like the osprey, which travel in both areas. I hope that creating public art can complement our efforts in emission reduction. Um, this is a challenge fought on many fronts, political, activism, art, and many others. Thank you. Elizabeth Brown is next, followed by Gordon Levitt. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Brown, and I'm a Eugene resident, and I work for the organization. And I work for the organization Our Children's Trust. I am a climate activist, but I am not an environmentalist in the traditional sense. I've come to this issue of climate change um, from a human rights and social justice perspective. In 2005, I volunteered at the evacuate, evacuee center in Houston after Hurricane Katrina, and I saw the government neglect of the evacuees and the injustices that followed Hurricane Katrina as a microcosm of global climate change and the injustices of the climate change and um, climate-related and Climate-related extreme weather events have brought and will continue to bring about humanitarian crises, conflict, forced migration, all to those who are least responsible for causing the problem. And over the past two years, I've had an amazing opportunity to work with these incredible young people um, through our Children's Trust and some of the top climate scientists around the world. And I've come to realize that this is an intergenerational justice issue as well. And climate change will have extremely adverse impacts on the poor, disenfranchised, the young, the elderly. But it's also going to have economic impacts that affect businesses and the affluent. And so in 2012, the federal government spent more on dealing with the impacts of climate disruption than they did on transportation and education. And paying for climate disruption was one of the largest non-defense discretionary budget items in 2012. And I applaud the efforts that this council has taken on climate change so far. And even though I know that you don't have the authority or budget of the federal government, all governments have an obligation to protect crucial natural resources on behalf of their citizens. And I respectfully request that you put our proposed climate recovery ordinance on, on the agenda for two of your meetings this fall. Thank you. Up next is Gordon Levitt, followed by James Beeson.
Good evening, counselors. My name is Gordon Levitt. I'm 23 years old and a second year law and conflict resolution student at the University of Oregon School of Law. I'm also a lifelong resident of Oregon and a current resident of Ward 3. I'm testifying tonight to urge the city council to protect current and future generations by taking further action on climate change. <coughs> Two and a half weeks ago, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, better known as the IPCC, released a new summary of scientific findings on climate change. Over the past four years, more than 250 authors from 39 countries worked on a 2,500-page report citing to over 9,200 scientific publications in order to assess the current state of our climate. Some of the key findings are the warming of the climate system is unequivocal, and since the 1950s, many of the observed changes are unprecedented over decades to millennia. The atmosphere and ocean have warmed, the amounts of snow and ice have diminished, sea level has risen, and the concentrations of greenhouse gases have increased. It is 95 to 100 percent likely that human influence has been the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid-20th century. Continued emissions of greenhouse gases will cause further warming and changes in all components of the climate system. Limiting climate change will require substantial and sustained reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. The Council has an opportunity to engage with these time-sensitive issues this fall. Three weeks ago, I and several youth came to City Council and asked you to consider an ordinance that we have developed. This ordinance would commit Eugene to the goals stated in the 2010 Community Climate and Energy Action Plan and would allow the City to develop a new comprehensive climate and energy plan that limits climate change by achieving substantial and sustained reductions of greenhouse gas emissions. It is our hope that you will Discuss the ordinance as an agenda item at an upcoming council meeting. Thank you for your dedication to climate and energy issues, and we look forward to working with you to, to excuse me, to continue Eugene's environmental leadership. Next up is James.